You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring attorney, guest, and former felony prosecutor Eric Fadis. The trial of Chad Daybell, it keeps uh, getting deeper and deeper. The defense uh, out there uh, pleading their case. And we're hearing testimony from people that we have never heard from before, never heard from in uh, Lori Vallow's uh, trial because, well, they didn't need to testify then. These are people that are trying to stand up for Chad. And they happen to, Chad happens to be their dad. It's a lot of his kids that have uh, taken the stand uh, in the last uh, week or so. Uh, very compelling testimony. I don't know how accurate a lot of it really is. It's, I believe, probably their perception being that it is their dad. You don't want your dad to be this monster. Uh, but, you know, that's all uh, up for conjecture. Joining me, uh, Eric Faddis, former prosecutor and defense attorney. What's been your takeaways thus far uh, of uh, that, uh, that week of testimony from the kids? You know, my takeaway is that the family of Chad Daybell has has done a decent, good, reasonably good job at protecting and supporting their family, Chad Daybell. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I think that it, especially in terms of the Tammy Daybell charge, the, the, the allegation that Chad killed his wife, Tammy, I think defense scored some points on that when they were kind of describing how Tammy had declining health and, and she was taking some supplements that could be problematic. Um, so I think they scored some points on that piece. For the other two charges regarding uh, um, the stepchildren who were killed, I'm not sure they've had as much traction. Yeah, I, I would agree there. I mean, nobody wants to believe that your dad had a role in killing your mom, especially if on the surface and what they were seeing was a happy household. I mean, however that is defined in terms of Chad Daybell land, I don't know. But it seems to them they were they were all kind of in a in a good place. I mean, have you ever seen a case where the children testify and, and if they were not abused by their father or who was ever on the being charged, turn their back on on dad or mom uh, if they did something horrible to somebody else? You know, it, it reminds me of two cases. Um, it, when we look at the Lori Vallow Daybell case, um, she had a son. I, I, uh, his name always is Colby. Colby Ethan, Ryan. Perhaps. What's that? Colby Ryan. Yep, that's the one. Uh, and so he sort of turned on his mom True. Uh, in, in terms of that case. But then you look at the um, Suzanne Morphew and Barry Morphew case in Colorado, my home state. Mm -hmm. uh, Barry Morphew's children have, have been steadfast in his support. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, it kind of uh, runs the gamut on that, but always interested to see how the family is going to react to these explosive allegations regarding their parent. That is true. I wasn't even thinking that. On the opposite side, uh, Colby Ryan did very much uh, turn on mom. I think he eventually saw the facts and and couldn't really necessarily dispute them. Obviously, two totally different upbringings uh, as well. Let's listen to Chad's daughter uh, refuting that uh, her mother, uh, you know, really was in such uh, good health, as we've we've heard the prosecution try to say. Uh, she's kind of going back and saying, no, not so much, uh, not so much the case. Were there other things that your mother did in terms of remedies to resolve other issues she may have had? She bruised really easily and she used Arnica gel. Okay. It, Arnica is a plant that helps with bruising. She had it in gel form. And when you say she bruised easily, can you elaborate on that? If she were to bump her hip on the counter when she was walking by, she would get a massive bruise from that. Even things like carrying a heavier load of groceries where the bag pressed on her arm would leave a bruise. At any time, were you present when your mother uh, discussed any of her health issues with other members of the school staff? Any chance that I got to, I would go visit her in her classroom. And I I never observed her talking about her health with our coworkers. I want to talk a little bit about the book fair on the 18th and the preparations that were involved. Did you personally observe anything uh, as far as your mother preparing for the book fair? She loaded her personal belongings in boxes and loaded them heavier than perhaps she should have because I observed her walking down the hallway and uh, she was resting the box against her body um, on her arms, holding it, holding it back and walking with a lot of effort. Did your mother participate in that 5K race? She did not. There was a discussion about some previous testimony about someone observing her. I believe it was a principal observing her crossing the finish line. Do you have any personal observations about what you saw that day? Uh, my mother may have walked across the finish line while helping with the race. 
administration. She did, was not entered as a participant and she did not go the entire distance. There were some people at the end of the race who were going very slowly and a group of people walked with them to encourage them to finish. And she may have been with that group, although I don't remember seeing her. Very, uh, I would say robotic, almost like testimony. These are people who I think have been trained not to question a whole hell of a lot of anything. And we'll listen to some more clips in a moment. Um, what do you think? Did she poke some holes in the testimony uh, of the uh, the prosecution here? Or is this really just, I mean, like I said, kind of robotic testimony from someone who's been trained not to question anything? Yeah, you know, I'm 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 kind of underwhelmed by um, at least that clip. Uh, you know, one thing that comes to mind not only is is like you said, she's been trained not to question anybody, but but it seemed kind of rehearsed too. In that, I'm wondering if the legal team sort of really um, ha had some involvement with her preparation when she's talking about the book fair stuff. She's sort of you know describing, oh, and my, my mom's body was positioned this way, and this is where she was holding the box, and this is how she was holding it, and this is how she was moving. It just seemed like. Like it's something that the attorney was like, hey, make sure you mention all these uh, small details because they're helpful. Exactly. And talk as monotone as you can with no personality whatsoever. <laughs> it's it's yeah, like kind of creepy. It's a little bit creepy. Um, I think even Alexa has great. I said that out loud. Uh, has, has a little more more candor to the tone. Um, Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.